too soon. Bailey Johnson covers high school sports for the Columbus Dispatch, and uh, she joins us now. Uh, first of all, Bailey, thanks for joining us. Uh, being familiar with the Columbus area myself, I had not heard of uh, an actual campus, a high school called Bishop Sycamore. So uh, is there an actual campus, a high school called Bishop Sycamore in the Columbus area? There is not. As far as we're aware, they do not have a campus or a practice facility or really anything tangible at all. They practice in a variety of indoor facilities that they rent out for a day at a time. And that's pretty much it. How did this happen? That this is a school that played, I think, six games last year, didn't win any of these games. And then next thing you know, they're playing a great football team on ESPN national TV. Yeah, it's still a little bit unclear how the game came to be scheduled. ESPN has told us that it was scheduled by Paragon Marketing Group, um, and it's a little bit unclear how Paragon got connected with the guys over at Bishop Sycamore. My understanding is there's another scheduling company in the mix that sort of connected Bishop Sycamore with IMG. I know they played last year at the end of uh, Sycamore's season last year. They played IMG, so there was clearly some sort of connection there to begin with, but frankly, it's all still a little bit of a mystery how they actually ended up playing this football game when they clearly had no business doing it. Are these high school players? No, most of them are not. Are they, so they're over 18? I have been told that the majority of them are at least 19 or 20, if not older than that. But is that a crime? Like if, if I think we've seen this before where you have, uh, there was a high school player who was like 28 years of age, came in and was dominating high school basketball, but you're playing against minors. I, I don't know what charges these coaches are facing to begin with, but I don't know if that's criminal as well. My understanding is that it isn't, but you'd certainly think that it would be to have them playing minors. I know there are other club teams in certainly the Columbus area, and I imagine around the country, because that's really what they are. They're not a school. They're a club team at this point of a bunch of guys just trying to play football. Um, there are definitely questions about how that works with the fact that most of them are not under the age of 18. And frankly, the more concerning part is that some of them are and should be getting a high school education right now that they're not getting. Uh, the coach, what can you tell me about the head coach? Roy Johnson is the head coach, or it's possibly Andre Peterson. They kind of switch back and forth on which one of them is truly in charge. Um, we know that Roy Johnson has done this before. He ran an academy called COF Academy here in Columbus a couple of years ago that ended up getting shut down um, and it just kind of popped back up again. Same people, new name as Bishop Sycamore. This feels like a scam. Is it? It is. Yeah. Pretty much. Yeah. But what are they, what are they getting out of this? What are they, what are these coaches trying to pull off here? Well, they're trying to, and they do have an admirable mission if they were accomplishing it correctly. They're trying to take kids who are from maybe disadvantaged backgrounds or, need help getting to college and playing college football and they're trying to help them. But the overall impression is they just don't really know what they're doing and are probably doing more harm than good. Have you reached out to parents of these uh, kids who are playing for Bishop Sycamore? I've spoken to a parent whose son left the program over the summer after originally joining them at the beginning of the spring. And what did they say? He said it all sounded good in the beginning. His son graduated from a school here in Columbus and was looking to take a prep year to get better offers after COVID sort of didn't allow him to go to the camps he thought he would get to go to. So they signed on with Sycamore. He was going to be the starting quarterback. They were going to build a team around him and then just nothing ever materialized. Uniforms, they went on the camp circuit and left hotels unpaid all around the country and just all turned out to be quite shady and they left um, at the end of the summer. Do they have... Uh game scheduled that they're still going to play? They do. As far as I know, every game that has been on their schedule, which includes they're supposed to play this coming Friday in, I believe it's Tennessee. They're supposed to play a couple teams in Ohio. They're supposed to play a team in Texas. And as far as I know, all of those games are still on as scheduled. But I'll, explain this to me, though, Bailey, that they had a game, was it 48 hours prior to the game on ESPN? Yes, they played Friday night in Pennsylvania. How, do, how does this happen? No, like nobody's nobody's monitoring this? Like it's one thing for it to happen, but it's another thing that you end up on ESPN against absolutely. a great team. Yeah. A power the coaches are, they're, Our coaches are really wonderful salesmen. I can tell you that. I listened to them for three hours on a Twitter conversation yesterday, and they could sell a used car to a used car salesman. But 
I mean, it's unbelievable, honestly, what they've gotten away with here so far. They told us that only 12 to 15 of the players played in both games and they only played maybe a few snaps in the first quarter and then played in the second half, that type of thing. But from what we've seen on the tape from both games, that's not the case. This is crazy. And and then you're hearing these horror stories that, you know, maybe they were stealing food because they didn't have food. There's a GoFundMe page, uh, not paying hotel bills. It, you know, feels like somebody's going to jail here, Bailey. It does. It very much does. I don't know of anything at this point, but I can only imagine that investigations are coming because especially with the kids they have that are under the age of 18, they have an obligation to be providing them an education that they're not getting. What's the local uh, reaction in Columbus? A lot of people, it's kind of split between, yeah, we knew these guys were shady, this isn't surprising, and people who have never heard of them. A lot of people really didn't know this was happening, and the people who did are like, yeah, we know Roy Johnson, he's done this before, this doesn't shock us that the scam blew up on national TV. Is there an address? Do, Do they list an address for the school? The address that's registered with the state for last school year, which, by the way, as far as we're aware, they're not registered with the state for this coming school year. Um, The address that's listed is for an indoor training facility um, about 15 minutes outside of downtown. And the people at that training facility have told us they come in maybe once a month to use the weight room for a little bit. Good luck with this, Bailey. Sounds like a a plum assignment here of trying to untangle this uh, evil web here you have with. And I don't think there is an actual bishop named Sycamore, is there? I I went to Catholic grade school. I I didn't pay attention, but I don't know if there's a is it the patron of lost causes? Like, is there a bishop Sycamore here, Bailey? As far as I know, there is not. I did see a tweet from Andre Peterson, one of the leaders, where he said the bishop basically means that he's the overseer. And he's the overseer of the program. So I think it comes from him somehow. Mm, That doesn't sound good. Bailey, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. That's Bailey Johnson, covers high school sports for the Columbus Dispatch.